Generals, gentlemen. Hello and hello and welcome back to Command and Conquer Alpha, also known as Generals 2. I am only the machine of the Generals, gentlemen, and today I am co-casting with my good friend Cybert. Yes, indeed. Not really here to replace Archon Hawk, but at least for this Alpha match, I will be joining the Generals, gentlemen. So today we are casting a one versus one match here on ooh, excavation i think it is called nile delta no delta my bad sorry yes yeah, so on the top here as the eu mercury red we do have ganon and on the south side you just across the river close by air but far by land we do have from team orbit hexus or at just hexus i'll probably be calling him he is going to be going for a he's actually kit bash the gla engineer general and he's going to be going for that fast war factory followed up by a fast salvage bay. Why is he doing that? Well, you know, because sandstorms are tier 2 now. Sandstorms are very good indeed. So we do actually have an assault APC from Ganon. He isn't quite using it just yet, but he may use it to try and hunt down some workers and really prevent those old derricks. All derricks are very cheap and fast to build, but they're actually quite vulnerable. So they're very open to harassment. So actually another assault APC. So I would definitely like to see Ganon here try and really prevent those old derricks from going down. Yeah, uh, actually, Hexus is actually going to be going for a couple of sandstorms. So he's just pushing those out onto the map. Looks like we might have our first engagement as both players do pull back. I'm not sure who would win in a one-on-one -on -one fight, the uh, the uh, Assault APC or the Sandstorms, but it looks like both of our players are going to be going for that somewhat fast Oil Derrick. It's not a super fast Oil Derrick, but it is going to be Oil Derrick before expansion, which is to be expected. Yeah, no command centers as well, so both of these players know what's going on. They see their opponent's buildings, so until they build a command center, they will be able to know exactly what's going up, which will kind of give them an idea of where to harass. They know which old derricks have currently been built, but that I can't see their units, so they don't know how well defended they are. So I would like to see command centers go down, just going kind to of prevent that global vision. Yeah, and it looks like Hex is going to be going for a second Oil Derrick. Of course, he does have to stockpile about 600 credits before he can build that second Oil Derrick, but he's got the worker sitting right next to it. He's sending Sandstorms out around the map. I think he's doing the same thing, which is probably what uh, Ganon is doing, where he's just trying to s he's trying to find that loose worker, that worker that's running around the map, going to build those Oil Derricks and really looking to cut it off. But in the meantime, we do have a Black Market tank. It is not going to be the Marauder 2 tank. It is going to be the Black Market tank out of... Uh, actually, we do have a couple of APCs going to be getting spotted. It looks like four in total. So between the Sandstorms and the Black Market, I don't know if they'll Ooh. actually be able to catch those APCs, but the APCs may actually be going for the Oil Derricks. Yeah, nice moves. They're actually kind of duking those sandstorms. They don't want to get caught. And if you can take down the old derricks, that's definitely more important than catching those units. Because once you kill the old derricks, you will kind of prevent their income. And of course, that will slow down the wave of reinforcements. So look at that. That's actually getting bursted down pretty fast here. Four APCs will kill it in a handful of seconds. But there are actually buggies moving in. And they will take a couple of shots though. But how effective will they be in this matchup? There is actually five of them against three. That black market tank really should turn the odds here. But nice work there from Ganon. Actually sniping that old derrick. And then running away. Don't want to initiate, don't want to kind of really commit to that engagement, just kind of backing off after sw sweeping down and killing that old Derek. So nice play. Yeah, but actually the geometry of the map and the buildings may actually be working a little bit against Ganon here as the Sandstorms and the Black Market Tank do catch up. Ganon turning to engage one Sandstorm going down almost immediately, but as an Assault APC goes down as well and desperately trying to catch up with those forces. Hex is trying to chase down that heavily damaged APC, but it looks like Ganon will be able to get away. Yeah, that Marauder, the Black Market tank was very powerful against those APCs, but the APCs are faster, so they can just kind of retreat from that. So definitely, disengaging was a good choice there. If those APCs stayed in, they would have got torn apart by not only the Marauder, but also then the Sandstorms, even the Court that moved in as well. So we are seeing the second supply here from Ganon, going to be securing his income and a barracks as well to produce some rocket troops. I don't think that's a good idea because of the force that is moving out. And ooh, actually one of these APCs may escape with hardly any health as well. So on nice unit preservation, they're just going to be able to pull that back just in time. But at the same time, this is actually a pretty scary force. We've got four black market tanks in the main army. A fifth one could be rallied up to the north and going for that oil derrick is exactly what Hex needs to do. He's taken some economic damage himself and he has rebuilt his own oil derrick, but he really needs to start putting on the pressure and do some damage to his opponent. Yeah, but Ganon has these garrisons. So it's going to be very hard 
for Zen to actually push through because those garrisons are quite hard to break with only black market tanks. You really need some garrison clearing. And I'm actually, I'm not sure which, what GLA gets. I think it's the guys that throw Molotovs, whatever they're called. It's been a while since I've played GLA, but uh, those garrisons are definitely very hard to break through. But he could, of course, flank that and go through the left-hand side up near that top left supply, because there are definitely no units and no garrisons nearby protecting that. Yeah, and it looks like, actually, I think what uh, what Hex is doing is he's just waiting for an extra couple of units because he's got a he's got a black market tank and a quad cannon being rallied up so he doesn't want to be caught out out of position I think he added on the quad cannons just as a reaction from that barracks I'm not entirely sure but is that actually a command center going down it looks like it is for yeah, Ganon is. So that'll prevent the vision. More RPCs are moving out, so Ganon really wants to hunt down and harass these old dirks, which is very, very important. He might kill a second one here, unless we do see some uh, buggies moving in and try and harass those down. I'm not sure if they're nearby. You'll have to tell me about that. No, there is one nearby, but it's not. It's just going to get eliminated if he chooses to engage. Hex does pull it back, and he also does have a radar van, which, I mean, I guess it's an infiltrator van, not a, not a radar van. That would be <laughs> silly. But uh, yeah, Ganon's force, actually the entire thing was on the wrong side of the map, completely out of position to defend that attack. And as a result, yeah, that oil derrick just got destroyed. And I think the assault piece APCs got away without a single shot taken. Yeah, they did, they did. One thing I want to mention as well is the, like, the vision that units actually have in this is very small compared to previous CNC games where typically units have quite a lot. But actually, main engagement here, the tanks are moving in to protect that old Derek. They're going to be very powerful against these assault APCs. Wolf Force through retreat may actually kill that old Derek here. There it goes, and now retreat after that. So, very nice timing there. There goes an ability. ability. Doesn't actually connect or anything, though. But now the Marauder tanks should back off the retreat. Yeah, actually, that was a... tanks, rather. That was a nice catch there by Hexus, and as you can see, Ganon tried to throw down a support power just to stop the tanks from engaging and chasing, but Hex already had the units swing around back to flank that army and able to take it out. So now that that command center is down, there's actually going to have to be some scouting that happens for Hex. For example, he doesn't know if perhaps a third base was taken, if three oil derricks were taken. He has no idea what his opponent is doing, because having the command center like the fog hack like that, it, it kind of gets you into the sense of, oh, I don't have to scout, I can just see through the fog. <laughs> and then they throw it on the command center, and you forget to scout, and you're like, they don't have, oh, shoot, they have way more stuff than yeah, I thought they did. Yeah, you can't scout units. So we have a lot of RPGs here, a lot of missile squads here from Ganon. He's really going ham on this, probably because of the sheer number of those black market tanks. And of course, the ideal counter, but we actually have a harvester drop here, unloading several rocket squads into the base here of Hex and may kill a couple of these workers, but RPGs aren't the best choice. Well, actually, just kidding. Just kidding indeed, because these RPGs are destroying the workers. What? Yeah, the workers are going to be returning fire, and workers are actually pretty effective with their, uh, their Molotovs are actually damage over time. In the main base, or almost just outside of the main base, it looks like Hex is going to be going for an engagement here. So possibly a little bit of a base trade, but never mind. Hex does have a couple of quad cannons and a black market tank turning around to deal with this attack. So he should be able to clean that up at the same time. He's putting a little bit of pressure on Ganon. Yeah, he took down one of the old derricks with a pretty big army of black market tanks. And that quad, quad cannon is quite nice, because not only will that deal with the rocket troops, that will also deal with the Harvester as well, so that's a nice transition. He's gonna have to get a lot of those quads to deal with these RPGs or even his infantry, but actually a huge push here coming from Hex. May actually catch this supply down, but there's a lot of rocket troops there and even a Valkyrie as well, a heavy attack helicopter and even a railgun tank. That is nice timing there from Gan. He's gonna slaughter the black market tanks with all those RPGs. Wolf Force to retreat, but looks as though actually the engagement here is actually committing to this. I don't like this idea because he's getting shredded apart by not only the RPGs, but also the flying Valkyries and those powerful railgun tanks. Yeah, so that engagement Maybe not the best for Hex. He loses pretty much his entire army. Oh, that was not a good engagement at all. He desperately tried to pull something out of his hat. The GG is thrown down. Hexus looks wow. like is going to be tapping out of this game. Yeah, I'm quite surprised there. He could have just retreated that pretty easily. Black market tanks are definitely a lot faster than RPGs and railgun tanks. So really committing to that engagement wasn't a good idea. But also the positioning, because he was kind of caught like behind the supply. His retreat wasn't very easy. So I really don't like how he did that because Ganon was like really confined in his base. He had no oils. He had his two supplies and that was it. Whereas then Hex had like free reign of the map. He had several old derricks. Hey, second supply, I'm pretty sure. If he kind of solidified that map control, got more old derricks, more supplies, he could have definitely had the superior economy and therefore the superior production to overwhelm Ganon. 
Yeah, so some uh, definite mistakes in the end there. I feel like Hex opened that up pretty well, but then his follow-up, I mean, after the quad cannons, which was a good catch by Hex, after that, just that committing into that attack, he was at such an awkward position because Ganon chose the perfect moment to engage right when his army was half trapped behind that supply center. And then at that point, Hex was like, well, I guess I'll try to pull something off with that radar van and cloaking, but it just did not work out. And overall, it looks like income was relatively similar, but overall, Ganon did have an in a economic superiority for the length of the game, but not a big one at all. That doesn't even really make too big of a difference, I wouldn't think. Yeah, I definitely liked Ganon, how he was constantly harassing those old Derricks with his APCs, probably secured the economic lead that you were talking about. So, in generals too, if, if you can be really active with your units, if you can really hunt down and deny those old Derricks, you can definitely secure the economic lead over your opponent. So, it's something I quite like about where Generals 2 is heading is that the old Derrick harassment is very fun, it's very active, and it can be quite fun overall. So, I think that'll wrap this one up. I am Energy Machine, the Generals Gentlemen. And this is Cyber, signing out.